Hi friends, Pastor Jim here. How are you? Are you keeping busy? God, I hope not. I hope you're not keeping busy. During this pandemic, there's no reason to keep busy. This is your chance, friends. This is maybe your one chance to slow down. In other words, if we don't slow down now, in July, during a global pandemic, when everyone else is slowing down, when the roads are mostly empty, when we're working from home, when there's not so much to do, I hope that you don't have to keep busy. It's been said that uh, busyness is not of the devil, it is the devil. I think that's a quote from Carl Jung. What we're talking about is taking time to practice Sabbath. Pick a day, any day of the week, or pick a part of a day and call it Sabbath, Sabbath rest. There are so many good books on Sabbath. Uh, one I'm holding here is by Mark Buchanan. It's called The Rest of God. The Rest of God. There's also a great book by, um, by Wayne Muller. And, and Mark Buchanan quotes Wayne Muller throughout his book. We had members of the church read that while we were on sabbatical in 2008. We had a Lilly grant, and uh, the Lilly Endowment paid for copies of that book, or at least subsidized it. And I think we bought 50 copies and had uh, folks read the Wayne Muller book. It's called Sabbath, Restoring the Sacred Rhythm of Rest, 1999. So I hope you're not keeping busy. I want to share with you a, f a few uh, quotes from Wayne Muller in this book by Mark Buchanan. Uh, while I'm turning to that, when our daughter and son were small, young, uh, they had a children's book. I would love to find it and show it to you, but I think we've probably given it away. And it was a, one of those little picture books with a couple, with one sentence or a few words on each page. Beautiful color photographs of a stuffed teddy bear doing different things throughout his day, playing on the playground. And it said, busy bear, I am so busy showed him on the jungle gyms playing, or having tea with a friend, busy bear, busy bear is so busy. And it used to crack me up. Um, I hope the message was not lost on our children. I think they learned it, that uh, for a stuffed animal who gets lots of free time and who doesn't really use a day timer or a Palm Pilot or now an iPhone to keep track of his or her um, schedule, if that bear is so busy, there's something wrong. Anyway, listen to what Wayne Miller writes. I visited the offices of wealthy donors, the crowded rooms of social service agencies, and the small houses of the poorest families. Remarkably, within this mosaic, there is a universal refrain. I am so busy. It does not seem to matter if the people I speak with are doctors or daycare workers shopkeepers or social workers, parents or teachers, nurses or lawyers, students or therapists, community activists or cooks. Whether they are Hispanic or Native American, Caucasian or Black, the more their lives speed up, the more they feel hurt, frightened, and isolated. Despite their good hearts and equally good intentions, their work in the world rarely feels light, pleasant, or healing. Instead, as it all piles endlessly upon itself, the whole experience of being alive begins to melt into one enormous obligation. It becomes the standard greeting everywhere. How are you? Oh, I am so busy. There's another quote from Wayne Miller on the next page. He says, I've sat on dozens of boards and commissions with many fine and compassionate and generous people who are so tired, overwhelmed, and overworked that they have neither the time nor the capacity to listen to the deeper voices that speak to the essence of the problems before them. Presented with the intricate and delicate problems of poverty, public health, 
community well-being and crime, our impulse, born of weariness, is to rush headlong toward doing anything that will make the problem go away. Maybe then we can finally go home and get some rest. And his, uh, Buchanan's point on this page, as he quotes Wayne Miller, is that when we stop caring about the things we care about, that's a sign that we're too busy. When we stop caring about the things we care about, I invite you, I encourage you to uh, look at your spiritual dashboard. Make sure your gauges are all in a good shape, that you're not spiritually on empty. God be with you as you assess your soul and your tasks every morning, what you're going to do that day. Carve out space between your tasks or in the middle of the day and at the end of the day to rest and play. May God help us. Thank you for listening.